Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I want to make a video about pressure and honing. And right now I am resetting the bevel on a 1K. I killed the edge and I reset the bevel. Uh, this is not a how to reset bevel <clears throat> video, but I just wanted to talk about using pressure to hone. And for that, I'm going to use my uh, Suita, the one that I used in my last video. Let me make sure this is good. Yeah, we should be good. So, <clears throat> if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably heard me using uh, or saying that when I hone, I do not use different pressures throughout my honing process. And this, this is true for the most part. Uh, that's how I prefer to hone, and I think is the most uh, consistent way you can hone. And if you haven't heard this, I'll mention it again. So basically, I compare it to playing uh, golf right you never change the way you swing the ball <clears throat> the swing swing the, the the club right you only change the club to acquire different distances so what I do is I use the same swing I use the same pressure the same motion throughout all my stones letting my stones do the work that takes one variable away from the equation on honing right so that's how I wanted to do uh, or I've been doing it for a long time because when you start honing at the beginning you don't know what you're doing right you don't know what you're doing wrong and having all these different variables will definitely uh, skew or make it harder for you to decipher what you're doing right what you're doing wrong so the purpose of this video is to show you one of the ways <clears throat> that I use pressure for honing and what would I need to use pressure if I just told you that, you know, the golf story or playing golf way? Well, sometimes <clears throat> not all racers come uh, nice and even. So sometimes you need to apply more pressure on one side than the other one to fix that. Uh, as you gain more experience, you can speed up the process by applying pressure. Right. Uh, now, when I talk about pressure, I don't talk about pressure coming down uh, as much as pressure torquing it in this motion. And it's very important that you are careful when you do that, right? If you apply pressure that way, and I'm exaggerating, obviously, and you overpressure, what's going to happen is you, you're going to damage that stone and your edge, right? If not, you can depending on, on the on the razor if it is a full hollow you can bend it you can actually be putting a bend making that bevel a little bit wider especially in the on the early stages another risk that you uh, encounter for over torquing on smaller racers is that you can flip as you go in and if you do that there goes your edge right uh, I've done that before on smaller uh, four eights it happens really really easily so be very careful with the pressure you apply. Usually, I hone on pressure that the amount of pressure that is required for that racer to be touching at all times the spine and the uh, the edge. But if you apply just a tad more pressure, you are gonna be cutting more metal. It's just like woodworking, right? You can use a thousand grit on a wood piece of wood, but if you are welling on it, you're going to leave deeper marks. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave deeper marks, and then we're going to be shifting until we have just light pressure. And that's one way that you can use to uh, hone with only one stone from the beginning to the end. So one hone stone or one stone hone, sorry, is not setting the bevel all the way to finishing, but it's setting the bevel and then using one stone for uh, low range, mid range to the end. So 
I haven't tried this on this stone yet. I think it's very capable. So let's do this. This video might be a little long. I hope not. But so this is what I do. I use my DMT 325 to raise up slurry. And this stone is is pretty hard for a suita. Um, so the first slurry that I'm gonna raise, I want it to be thick uh, or thicker than other slurries. Cause all I'm gonna do is take away that 1000 grit uh, uh, scratches away. So I'm gonna do circles. Oh man, and you can already see the gray. This is just me. You don't have to do circles. And I'm putting a considerably um, uh, fair amount of pressure. Half strokes, like those. Look at that slurry already. We are in the cutting beautifully. About do 10, 15, 20, just regular strokes. And that's the first stage. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. That's the first stage, right? So what I do is considerably amount of pressure without uh, bending that, that razor, without flexing it, that'll be a better word. And then I clean it up, All right? And then I go again. I'm gonna raise the slurry again. I'm gonna do this three times. Why three times? I'm gonna do heavy pressure, medium pressure, and then just the regular pressure I usually use, which is very light pressure. This one, I want the slurry just a tad diluted more than before. I hope this angle is better. Last time the light was driving me crazy. All right. I'm really digging this stone. The feedback on it is awesome. All right, so that's it for the two first stages. This video might be shorter than I was expecting. So now, for the final stage, if I was to shave off of this stone, which I think I'm gonna do, um, I will raise another slurry and this time I will go with no pressure, uh, which is just enough pressure to make contact. And that's the pressure that I usually use on all of my other videos throughout. But I'm only using one stone to make all the, the effect, right? And then this one I'm gonna be diluting all the way to water. And since this is not a ridiculous, uh, <laughs> a super extra hard stone I will be uh, going finishing in water a couple 
driplets in there. Let me erase it so you can see. That's what I want on my slurry dripping. All this time, you want to make sure that you're looking at, at what you're doing, right? Yet, yeah. it feels the same when you put the racer and you come in across. That the sound is the same. That there's no crunchies. That it's not rough in one spot. You can actually feel it. That's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, trying to concentrate. It's kind of hard as I'm speaking, but. Still has some nice slurry on it. It's kind of murky. I don't know how good it is in the camera, but man, I think this is gonna be an awesome shave. I am not shaving. <laughs> I made some videos before. If you haven't seen them, check them out. Where I hone and shave without pausing the camera. Um, I thought this was going to take longer, so that's why I'm now upstairs in the bathroom, but... So what I'm going to do now is dilute this water. So I'm going to take my blade, I'm going to rinse it off, and I'm going to bring it in. And it brought new water, fresh water, and it's diluting what's on the stone right now. So when I started honing, I did it in a 1K King, 6K King, and a Chinese Natural. And those are big jumps from 1K to 6K to 12K. So I would jump, I would do this that I'm doing right now on the 6K and then I will do it on the 12K. And I had great, great edges. Uh, you know, it took a while to perfect or not perfect but you know get it to where I want it my skills with those stones but with anything just had to keep practicing until you get better let's do that again friends bring fresh water right now I have very slight slurry let's see if I can angle it Still mounting all the way to the top of the blade. Undercutting amazingly. Really nice. And right now I'm just using very light strokes, very light, barely touching. To lose some more. Now I just have very light slurry, almost no slurry, it's been very murky and I'm feeling the stone getting magnetic on me. Uh, it's pulling it's a little bit, uh, it's not it's not pulling as uh, where I want it to be. still has some slurry that acts kind of like lubricant I guess. but. All right, so we're gonna rinse off. When I rinse off, I'm gonna dry it. I wanna make sure that there's no slurry, no particles there, and then we're just gonna go for water. Water only. We're doing very light strokes. And now, it's sticking. So I call sticking it's very nicely. And I have like no pressure and it's sticking. Couple more strokes. All right. Let's 
try her up, try our hands. Do some stropping. Please be careful if you do palm dropping. I don't think I had to tell you that. It will hurt. <laughs> finishing strokes. I like my finishing strokes to be nice and small. A couple six zigzags, make sure that we're good. Right now, even though it's pulling, it's sticking, it's not as bad as earlier. And that's because of the stropping, what the stropping does. And I'm looking right now for that sticking again. And that will tell me that this stone got to the, to the end. That's it folks, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. That razor right there, uh, you can believe in me or not, I'm gonna strop it and it will be in my next video uh, and I'm gonna shave with it. I'm gonna shave with it and see what happens. I am very confident that the edge is there. I have done, I used to do that very often with my first Jana, um, it, which was a, a Suita as well. and. Uh, I did it for like a year, so I, I I know the feeling, I know how it looks when the, that razor is shaved ready, and at least for my face and for my whiskers, that will be just shave ready, just be perfect. All right, I uh, hope you enjoy. You guys, uh, uh, you guys leave comments if you want. Be nice <laughs> and respectful to others. Enjoying, get honing. <laughs>